Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to learn about the appearance of the endometrium as seen on ultrasound. To help us remember, imagine that this fruit is the uterus and this sponge is the endometrium. The uterine wall has a parametrium, a thick myometrium, and an inner endometrium. The endometrium here is drawn in green on the left. The picture on the right shows, at, shows us that the endometrium has two layers. The more basal part is called basalis. The basalis is permanent, while the yellow part here is temporary. Temporary meaning it is sloughed or shed and is called the functional layer. Or functionalis layer. This is what it looks like under the microscope. Notice here that the basalis layer is right next to the myometrium and the functional layer here is right next to the endometrial cavity. Both the basalis and functionalis layer have glands, but only the portion of the glands here in the functionalis layer is the one which is being shed or sloughed. The appearance of the endometrium is dependent on the phase of the menstrual cycle. To help us remember, think about the function of the endometrium, and that is to prepare for the coming of the blastocyst. So the endometrial glands will need to grow, then they will mature and then secrete something and that is glycogen. This glycogen will produce or create a glucose-rich environment which is conducive for the blastocyst. If the endometrium gets disappointed or if pregnancy does not occur, it will then shed the functional layer and this is now called the menstrual phase. So again, here's the endometrium. We will then picture this endometrium lining the uterus. Here we have a layer in the anterior wall and another in the posterior wall. We will start with the endometrium here appearing very thin. And because this is because the functional layer is just shed during menstruation. The glands will then proliferate, hence called the proliferative phase. And this creates a distinct appearance or a straight and orderly pattern of the glands in the functionalist layer. Because this layer has straight and orderly glands, this layer will be hypoechoic. Hypoechoic means it's darker compared to the myometrium. So take a look at this. You can see that there are two hypoechoic layers separated by this opposed echogenic mucosal layers of the endometrial cavity. This is called the trilaminar appearance or sandwich appearance. This trilaminar appearance is composed of the opposed mucosa with the echogenic basalis layer on either side and the hypoechoic functionalis layer in between. Notice that this sandwich appearance or trilaminar appearance is seen when the functional layer here is already thick. And this is during the late proliferative phase. In the early phase, the hypoechoic layer is not yet obvious. But what about this one? What is this hypoechoic layer? This hypoechoic layer is actually part of the inner myometrium. We have to be careful to not include this when we take the endometrial thickness. In order to differentiate this inner myometrium 
um, appearing hypoechoic and not mistaking this as the hypoechoic functional layer, we take a look at this basalis layer. So in this true trilaminar appearance, we see this echogenic basalis layer lining the thick hypoechoic functional layer. This layer is not seen here in this portion because this is already the inner myometrium. So, after the glands grow, they are now ready to secrete glycogen. And that's to create, again, a glucose-rich environment for the blastocyst. And this is now what we call the secretory phase. From the picture on the left, which shows a trilaminar appearance, we will now see this increased echogenicity from the deeper functional layer due to the secretion of this glycogen and mucin. Now, how do we measure the endometrial thickness? To measure it correctly, we need to get a view in this sagittal view. We're going to measure one echogenic border to the other echogenic border. By doing this, we are able to uh, include both the anterior and the posterior wall. Notice here that when there is fluid already in the endometrial cavity, we are going to exclude this in the measurement. And later, I'm going to show you how. So, one can imagine pouring out glycogen here in the deeper functional layer. And this creates the increased echogenicity in this portion. As the secretory phase proceeds or progresses, more glycogen and mucin is secreted, and the entire endometrium now looks echogenic. So from this image in the earlier secretory phase, where the echogenic um, portions are here in the deeper layers, it will now become like this in the mid-secretory phase. It is now uniformly echogenic. We then say that the endometrium is at its thickest during the mid-secretory phase. So, so far, the changes we have seen are from the endometrium, which is still expecting the arrival of the blastocyst. But what if pregnancy does not occur? In this case, there is no longer need for the functional layer and is thus shed. We will see this sloughed or shed tissue from the functional layer admixed with blood, and this will appear as a hypoechoic material within the endometrial cavity. So we're going to expect an echogenic layer and then hypoechoic layer in between. Okay? In between the two echogenic layers. So, echogenic, echogenic, and then in between we have this hypoechoic layer. So, in taking the measurement, we must be careful to exclude the fluid. In this case, fluid is present here, so the endometrial thickness will only comprise of this layer and this layer. So now we understand the appearance of the endometrium, which follows changes in the menstrual cycle. Therefore, it is important to ask for the last menstrual period before scanning. This will give you the basis to say whether or not the appearance that you see is still appropriate to the phase of the menstrual cycle. That concludes our short talk, but let me share with you one more thing. We can use this understanding of um, ultrasound appearances during the phases of the, in the menstrual phases in order to understand this diagram. This is the sort of diagram that we see repeatedly in med school. And if you would like to learn more about this, 
we can cover this in a future episode.